Hey, how you doing? Today we're going to take a look at one of the newest open source modules that I've made, the BPM clock. The Crazy Clock has been a great first clock module, but its biggest flaw is that it's just a free running oscillator with a really large frequency range. So trying to dial in a specific tempo like 120 BPM is basically impossible. For example, the time delay difference between 120 and 125 BPM is only 20 milliseconds. So you would need the most precise hands in the world to dial in that sort of difference with the crazy clock. So this led to me using the Arduino Nano and a few other external components to see if I could make a more precise clock module. Plus I bought a handful of these little displays. So I needed a good reason to use one. So taking a look at the module, we can first see the big number on the screen where our BPM is displayed. We have a course control for the BPM by turning the encoder here where we can see the BPM going up and down by 5 beats. Then we have a find control by pushing and turning the encoder where we can see the BPM going up and down by 1 beat allowing us to dial in a specific BPM between 60 and 160. You can also see that this LED up the top here is flashing in time with the desired BPM, with the two jacks here connecting to the clock output. I set this output to run at a 1 16th clock pulse, as that's the resolution of my drum sequencer up here. Plus the output is multiplied already, as it's the main clock signal used in a patch. But what about all these other LEDs and outputs? Well I've actually combined the module with the clock divider, so we can have instant access to other timing divisions for envelope generators or sequencers. But with a big twist, most clock dividers only divide the original clock signal by 2 for each output. So the first output is half as slow as the clock, and the second output is a quarter as slow as the clock, and so on. But with this module, we can actually select different timing programs for each output by double pushing and turning the encoder. We have the numbers of the Fibonacci sequence, odd numbers, the first handful of prime numbers, and so on at each output. I basically just copied a bunch of number sequences from this wiki page here, and then just added them into the firmware. So some of the programs have really long divisions, and others have some really fast ones. It's a pretty broad mix. You can also see that the display shows all the numbers that are in the timing sequence, so that we can easily know what each output is doing. You may also notice that all of the LEDs, except for the first one, will stop flashing when we change between timing programs. I had to incorporate a reset into the program when the change occurs so that the outputs don't fall out of sync. But since this is an open source project, if anyone has a neat solution, I'd love to see it. Then down the bottom here, I've also included a switch to select between the auto or manual modes, with this other switch being used for the manual clock pulse. This is a feature from the crazy clock that I incorporated here as it's incredibly useful for setting up sequences in a patch to be on the first beat. Alright, so now that we have an idea of how the BPM clock works, let's see it in action with a patch. The most obvious thing that the BPM clock can be used for is to trigger drum sounds and envelope generators, allowing us to create interesting rhythms that couldn't be achieved with the standard clock divider. So I've set up a patch with a clock on 120 BPM and controlling a few different things. The main clock output is sent to the drum sequencer, which is triggering a 4 on the floor kick drum and offbeat hi-hats. The second output is sent to an envelope generator, which is triggering some chords through the filter and FX module. The third output is being used to trigger the snare drum. The fourth output is being used to trigger the Turing machine module for some random voltage, whose output is being multiplied and sent to two different destinations. The inversion input on the chords module, so we can change the arrangement of the notes within the chord, and the rate control for the triangle wave LFO, whose output is modulating the filter cutoff up and down. Then finally, the fifth output is being used to trigger the bongo drum. The drums and chords are then mixed together on the little mixing unit, with a touch of reverb on the chords. So what I'll do is go through a few different division programs and we can have a listen to how the rhythm changes as the divisions change for each output.
So as you can hear, some of the divisions create some pretty wild rhythms, especially when we start using some of the odd and prime number divisions, which create some pretty wild polyrhythms crossing over with one another. All right, so I'm not gonna show you all the different ways that we can use the BPM clock, as we could be here for hours. But basically, the BPM clock can be used in any other module that accepts a gate or trigger signal. So all your drum modules, your sequences, your envelope generators, sequential switches, the world is endless when it comes to using the BPM clock. Now, as I've been mentioning, this whole module is completely open source. So you can find all of the code and the relevant schematic files in the GitHub link just down here. So if you would like to modify or improve the module in any way, then you're completely welcome to do so. But if you'd like to help support the channel, I am also selling a set of PCBs on my Etsy store for only $30. You will obviously need to source your own components for them, but it's all using relatively inexpensive parts that can be found online or at your local electronic retailer. Plus they come fully supplied with all the schematics, build drawings and building instructions. So with all that being said, that's it for today's video. Until next time, I'll see you later.